this is Ryan George from The Thing You're Currently Watching. Please enjoy this pitch meeting for Jurassic World that I made several years ago, and then stick around after because I am going to talk about it. While you're doing that, I'm going to draw a T-Rex. So you have the new Jurassic script? Yeah, so let's start with the title. I know you wanted to go big on this movie, so what's a big step up from a park? I don't know, the world? Yes, exactly. That's your title, Jurassic World? Yep, nope, you guessed it. That's, that's, that's the title. You figured it out. So the whole world is filled with dinosaurs? That might be a little too big. No, it's not the whole world. It's a fully operational theme park. Oh, so the park is up and running. Exactly, and since it is a theme park, I thought maybe that could be a natural way to incorporate some product placement if you want. Perfect, because I already have a couple of those lined up. Oh, like what? Oh, just a couple like Beats by Dre, Starbucks, Converse, American Airlines, Coca-Cola, Samsung, Pandora, Margaritaville, Hilton, Triumph, Verizon Wireless, Columbia, Nissan, Nike, Oakley, IWC, Ben & Jerry's, Brookstone, IMAX, Mike & Ike, and like a crap load of Mercedes. Like if we could get a solid minute or two of Mercedes logos up on the screen, that would be awesome. Oh, okay. Too much? Tell you what, I'll just have a character crack a joke about product placement. That way people can't complain. Exactly, so now it's like a self-aware joke. I love it. So what's the story about? Well, the park's been open a while, so people are bored of dinosaurs. People are bored of dinosaurs. Yeah, that's the angle we're going with. So one of the main characters, Money Lady. Wait, wait, Money Lady? Oh yeah, a lot of these characters just have like one defining characteristic, so I didn't really bother with names. They should have names. Okay, um, Claire? That works. So Claire and her team develop a genetically modified dinosaur to attract new people. Genetically modified? Oh yeah, this thing is nuts. It has T-Rex genes. Wow. And raptor genes. Scary. And snake genes. Um. And tree frog genes. What? And cuttlefish genes. Okay, this sounds like too many genes. No, see, having a lot of genes meant I could make the dinosaur do whatever I needed it to do for the plot. Oh, smart. What can it do? Well, it's able to set up distractions. It can control its body temperature to hide from thermal detection, which it knows about and understands. It can also detect thermal radiation, which it uses to hunt. It can also camouflage itself, and also it kills for sport, and it knows that there's a tracker inside of it, and it's able to remove it. Wait, how does it know what a tracker is? I don't know, maybe it has genes from like a tactical system specialist from the FBI or something. What? SEAL Team 6 genes? I don't know. What I'm trying to say is that it's a very smart, borderline magical monster. Okay, so if this thing has all those abilities, it must be impossible for people to hide from it. Actually, super easy, barely an inconvenience. Really? Yeah, well, it can't really see, so. It can do all those things, but it can't see? Exactly, so if they just kind of stay still, it has a hard time finding them. That's very convenient. Super convenient, it works several times. So I'm guessing this thing gets out of its cage? It does. And so Claire evacuates the park? Um, kind of, eventually. Eventually, not, not right away? No, because evacuating the park would be bad for business. Oh, so she's the villain, she's like the bad guy of the movie. Nope, she's one of the two leads. And people are supposed to empathize with her? I was thinking maybe you could cast someone really pretty so people won't notice she's a terrible person. Oh yeah, true, I could totally do that. Awesome. So how close do people get to danger before she realizes she has to do something? Oh, a lot of people die. They do. Oh, well, the dinosaur kills a couple of people when it escapes right off the bat. And she doesn't evacuate the park. No, she sends more people after it. And they report back to her how dangerous it is, and she calls for the evacuation. No, they all die too. And then she calls for the evacuation. No, because money and business, remember? Right. Wow. She... She really likes business. Yes, very much, but Animal Loving Navy Guy gets mad at her. Animal Loving Navy Guy. Oh, let's call him Owen. Cool. Yeah, he's a badass that lives on the island, and his whole thing is that dinosaurs are animals. Oh, he cares about them. A lot. He gets super sad when they die, he raises raptors himself, he feeds them. He just treats them like animals, and he really, really loves animals. What does he feed the raptors? Oh, animals. Pigs, rats, goats, that kind of stuff. Gotcha. Anyway, so he tells Claire that they have to evacuate because a bunch of people have died, and she's like, leave, get out. Because business? Because business, exactly. But then Claire suddenly remembers that her two nephews are on the island, and she loves them a lot. She spends no time with them and doesn't know how old they are. Oh, and the last time she even referenced them in the movie, she was getting guilted into hanging out with them by their mother. It almost sounds like she just doesn't want to get in trouble if they die. Kinda seems like that, yeah, so she tracks down Owen to help her. She kicks him out for trying to save all the guests, and then she's like, come help me save two guests. Exactly, then a bunch of pterodactyls get out and start killing people. Please tell me they call for an evacuation now. Yeah, they start, but it's like way too late at this point. Too late, so people die. A lot of people die, yeah, the park is packed. But I thought the whole thing was that business wasn't going so hot. Like, that's why they made the dinosaur. Yeah, but I think the image of dinosaurs going on a murder spree in a crowd of 20,000 people is pretty cool. That does sound cool. Yeah, and Claire's assistant, this British lady named Zara, gets tossed around by pterodactyls like she was a rag doll and shoved into the water and then eaten by a giant dinosaur shark, and it's super scary and she dies. Jesus, what does she do to deserve that? Um... 
Nothing, I guess. Wasn't your ex-girlfriend a British woman named Zara? I mean, I don't see what that has to do with anything. Okay. Anyway, so then Claire and Owen kiss in the middle of this big attack. What? Why? Oh, well, they're both attractive, so they're in love now. Right? Makes sense. So what happens next? Well, there was this dude the whole movie that wanted to use dinosaurs in the military. What? I don't know. That's a little far-fetched, isn't it? I know, but I had a dream where a guy was on a motorcycle next to some raptors. Ooh. Right? And this is the only story thread I could think of to get us there. Fair enough. Okay, go on. So because everything's going crazy, this guy takes control and he's like, let's weaponize the raptors. I know, I know. So then they do that, but it doesn't work because they imprint on the dinosaur. And then there's a big fight between raptors and the new dinosaur and the old T-Rex from the first movie. And then the bad dinosaur gets eaten by the same shark thing as my ex-girlfriend. But what about the dinosaurs left standing? They kind of give each other knowing nods and go their separate ways. They don't try to kill each other? No, they have an understanding now. Maybe dinosaurs did that. I don't know. I did no research. Wow. So what do you think? It's... It's something. You don't like it. I think there's a lot of wacky stuff in there. Right. And characters that people won't really connect with. Okay. But it does have two very important things. What's that? Hot people and dinosaur attacks. Do you think that'll be enough to get people to buy tickets? Well, we'll just have to try and see. There you go, that's a T-Rex from the Jurassic Circus. That feels like the job that a T-Rex would have at the circus. I feel like those little arms would be good at close juggling, at least. Trying out a new audio setup for these videos. I did not like the sound in the last one. Plus, there has been a very high demand for pitch meeting ASMR. Tight, 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 tight. Wow, wow, wow. Wow. So Jurassic World was the sixth pitch meeting that I ever made. And I'm pretty happy with it, but watching it did bring back some anxiety that I had kind of forgotten about. See, because I was still starting out with pitch meetings and still kind of figuring out what they were, a big part of what I was trying to do was to show Screen Rant that I could churn these out and this was a sustainable thing for me to do. Back then I was also still making other videos for Screen Rant and providing voiceover for scripts on those top 10 videos and whatnot. And there are two things in this video that I remember now kind of made me worry that this was not gonna be sustainable and that this would just take too much time. The first one's that compilation you saw of all the product placement in Jurassic World. That's like 25 seconds of screen time, but that took probably two hours to put that together. I had to figure out every single company that had product placement in Jurassic World and also find those moments in the movie so I could screen cap them or in trailers or movie clips or whatever and compile all of that. It's it's a quick thing on screen, but it took a long time. And then the second thing is that Jurassic Circus bit. I remember asking myself if I should even include that joke because I thought it was funny, but it would take a bit of extra work. Not that it was like a tremendous amount of work, but for that like two, three seconds of screen time, I had to to choose a dinosaur, figure out how I can make it look like that dinosaur was a part of a circus, find a picture of that dinosaur, Photoshop that dinosaur, print out the paper, set up another camera shot, and edit in it. Not a ton of time, but probably a good 30, 40 minutes, which when you're trying to churn out videos, that kind of thing does add up. Ultimately, I'm really glad that I spent the 30, 40 minutes and put that joke in because that's, I think, Probably one of my favorite jokes from all the pitch meetings I've done, but it definitely did raise that question of like, wait, am I am I doing cutaway gags now? Because that's like a whole other ball game if I commit to that bit. But it all worked out and I'm glad I did it and I'll still do like weird cutaway gags once in a while when I feel like it. But there you go, that's just a little insight about the work that goes behind like a two second cutaway gag like that. Now about the movie itself, I had a good time with Jurassic World when it came out nine years ago? Oh my god. It was definitely over the top and it was very self-aware about what it was doing. There was a lot of that thing, you know, that sequels do where they have the characters be like, oh, the sequels never was good. Ugh. Like very meta about the things that they're doing so that they can get away with doing them. I would say it's tongue in cheek, but it's more like tongue down the throat. It's pretty overt. That sounds like the movie's trying to make out with you, but that's how I'm choosing to phrase it. But dinosaurs went chomp chomp and people went, whoa! So that's a good time. There is a really good video on YouTube by someone named Mike Hill that talks about this movie and he's much angrier about this movie than I am. I'll link it in the description, but he does a really good job of breaking down the fact that Claire is like the villain of the movie actually and that this movie is actually pushing kind of weird values. And I think he's very on the mark about all that. But if you're, if you're looking for a dinosaur go chomp chomp, people go, whoa movie, this is a movie that exists in that genre. And I'm all on board for Jake Johnson being in more things. Hire Jake Johnson for your things. 
casting directors. Okay, question time. I love your pro tip series. Any plans to continue with it or are you too busy with all your other projects? Yeah, so for those who didn't see it, pro tips was a series over on Screen Rant that I did a little bit for a little bit of time. It was very fun. I, I wrote and starred in a few of them and then I wrote some other ones and then I kind of stepped away and they kept it going for a while without me and then it ended. Yeah, no plans to make more of those. I feel like I kind of did what I wanted to do with that, which was like a masterclass parody covering some of the major roles within movie making. See, like, I don't think that is a series concept that's sustainable for over 300 episodes because they, you're, there's only so many roles. And it was also very time consuming. One of the reasons I'm able to churn out so many videos is because of th that green thing over there. I don't need to look for and book and schedule locations. I don't need other actors and deal with their schedules. I don't need any crew. I don't need to lug equipment around. It's, it, this is the key to things going quickly for me. So although I had a really good time, uh, it, that is uh, what it is. Hey Ryan, I listened to a playlist of these pitch meetings every night to sleep for the last couple of years. It seems like the more time between movie release and pitch meeting creation, the better you are at finding writing inconsistencies to poke fun at. Does this ring true for you? First of all, I get that comment a lot that people listen to my videos to fall asleep. And at first when I started getting those, I was kind of like, what do you, that's, kind of insulting. But then I listen to The Office to fall asleep every night, and I love The Office. So I now take that as a compliment. Thank you, I'm glad that I can be uh, your lullaby. That's weird. As for the second part of that question, yeah, I do think that does ring true. Part of the reason is that when movies are older, there's a chance that I've already seen them. And so then when I rewatch for the pitch meeting, I'm not surprised by things that happen and I can focus more time on spotting plot holes and inconsistencies and stuff like that. So I do think my notes are a lot better on older movies. And then also when I'm writing pitch meetings, there's the component of the internet and people's reactions. I do a ton of research. So for older movies, there's more stuff out there for me to kind of scavenge and bring back to my cave and turn into jokes. I'm definitely some kind of rodent in this analogy. There's d there's definitely more for me to work with. Hey Ryan, kind words. I want to ask, have you done any acting or went to acting school and do you plan on acting in the future? No, I did not go to acting school. I did one time sign up for the Kevin Spacey masterclass back when uh, that was an acceptable thing to do and I watched the first chapter and then stopped. I sometimes audition for stuff so you know maybe. I will however be playing multiple man in the MCU. Uh, Marvel has not reached out nor expressed any interest but I, I just, that, that's just a little hurdle to overcome. When you watch a movie do you ever hear the voices of screenwriter guy and producer guy pitching the movie you're watching? Yes I do and I also hear them all the other times as well, every waking minute.